Now in order to recover from those crazy high prices by Nvidia and Intel, let's take a look at a little cute processor that only costs 60 US dollars. This is the AMD Athlon 200GE Ravenridge APU, so a CPU with integrated graphics. Yes, previously it was the Ryzen 3 2200G that was the smallest and cheapest AMD CPU based on the Zen architecture. Now AMD has extended their lineup, so for those that have to work with an ultra low budget or just want to build a super cheap system, AMD has something nice to offer now. Since this is a dual core with four threads, you of course can't expect too much from this little thing, but nonetheless is it worth spending $60 on it? After all, it would be a real shame if you wasted $60 on something that just plain sucks. So I'll save you the money and time, I'll do the testing for you. Included in the packaging is the usual stuff by AMD, being instructions, sticker, CPU and of course a stock cooler. This one is extremely small, looks quite cheap, but should be good enough for our 35 watt TDP here. As mentioned before, it's a 2 core 4 thread processor, however, a known fact with Ravenridge is the 14 nanometer process from last year, not the new 12 nanometer one seen on the 2700X and the likes. Hardly any cache is on board considering that a pretty strong memory controller comes into play here with support for 2666 megahertz. But you could easily get faster RAM even though it would probably only make very little sense. A very important fact with this APU, AMD apparently has contracted the Intel disease. Gun is the unlocked multiplier as seen on the Ryzen counterparts. Here it's all locked. That's a shame. Well, at least now those A320 motherboards make sense and have their right to exist. The cherry on top is the integrated graphics unit named Radeon Vega 3 Graphics. The naming already tells us we're working with three compute units. Now since I have a lot of stuff left over from my Ryzen testing, that's motherboard and RAM, I'm not gonna go get cheap stuff for this test, meaning I'll be installing the Athlon into this overkill X370 motherboard by ASUS. The RAM as usual is the G-Skill Flare X at 3200 MHz. As usual, I'll first test the raw CPU performance, so all CPUs will be paired with a GTX 1080 Ti. Following that, it's on the APU alone to prove how it does with its integrated graphics. As some sort of reference point, I've added tests of Intel graphics of an i7-8700K. Of course, that's just for reference. And now, have fun!
Well, what's there to say about the results? I will admit I have some mixed feelings. I just can't quite fancy this Athlon 200 GE. But it's definitely not bad, especially not when considering its low price. You have to. So it makes sense this dual core is some sort of a snail, which is proven by most of the tests that were run. It also is clearly visible how dumb it is pairing such a low performance CPU with a beefy graphics card to start with a 1080 Ti, man. But oh well, I doubt anyone would do something like that anyway. If you're in a situation like this, you will experience some heavy bottlenecking. The graphics card's performance simply can't be put to use, since the processor is the limiting factor. Which however doesn't mean you can't go with a mid-range GPU like a GTX 1050 Ti or in some cases even a 1060. You should be getting a decent frame rate with those. But please be warned, don't take my word for it, this can differ greatly from game to game. A good example for this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we are sitting in the 30 FPS mark there, at least at maxed out settings. So I guess you know what I want to say by now, for gaming not quite the ideal processor. Same actually applies for work. By that I mean things that need a lot of CPU horsepower like video rendering for instance. That would be pure torture with the 200 GE. For normal office use, watching videos, movies, light gaming and surfing the web, this chip would be perfect. It does remarkably well. The temperature always remains quite low and unexpectedly the stock cooler remains pretty quiet. We don't even need to talk about power consumption, it's magnificent. Compared to the offered performance, sure it's not the best of the best, but it's definitely an APU with a super low power draw. What most of you probably are interested most in is the actual performance delivered with the integrated graphics, am I right? And what's there to say, it's a great processor for HTPCs. Understandably acceptable gaming performance is not to be expected here, but for videos the offered power is more than enough. Even 4K screens can be powered by this graphics unit, I don't mean games by that though. You have to be happy if you even get a smooth frame rate at a resolution as low as 720p. Nonetheless with some few game titles it is doable in some way. In any case if you're on the hunt for something cheap and affordable with integrated graphics this Athlon 200 GE at $60 isn't doing too bad. Nevertheless I would rather advise you to spend just a little more money and get something like the Ryzen 3 2200 G if you can. That one has 4 core to offer and things are even looking better in the graphics department as well. But I have to keep my rating fair and that's why I'm giving the AMD Athlon 200 GE my gold award. Alone the ultra low price and the fact that it is a more than usable CPU at that price makes up for a pretty decent value. And with that said, thanks so much for watching.